Hello, Miss Sumali. And Hello, uh, Manny. A uh, big, big, big congrats on the deal. It's intriguing and entertaining, and I to totally, totally enjoyed it. Thank you so much. I'm like, I'm thrilled to be talking with you about it. Oh, you're so welcome. Now, let's start with the basics, though. Okay. What got you interested in not only starring in the film, but also producing the movie? Uh, okay, so I'll tell you, I first started off as the producer of the film. I actually uh, didn't know, uh, I didn't even pitch myself to act in it at first, but... Um, the story really is based on uh, my real life relationship with my mom. It's it's based on my Filipina mother and uh, everything about the way we loved each other, the way we fought, the way <laughs> you see so much of our relationship on screen. And I just really needed to tell a story that honored how fiercely she loved me and she sacrificed for me. And so you know, at this at the core, this is a story about a mother's love for her daughter and their mutual desperation to protect each other at all costs. Um, and, you know, that it was just very special for me to end up producing the project, but then end up getting to play the woman that's based on my mom and dedicate the film to her and women like her who, who will do everything to who will do anything for their loved ones. Oh, I totally, totally agree. Filipino moms are the best. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You know, Ms. Somali, I, 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 so you said it's based on your love story with your mom, but mine is a dystopian <laughs> future, of course. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, the reason I, I love that we said it in the dystopian, dystopian sci-fi world, number one, because this is kind of a historically exclusive genre for us. You know, like it, it, it was really important to me that we center characters and perspectives that we don't normally see in this genre, women of color. And the Filipino representation was so important to me. We got to, you know, tell this story about a Filipino mother in a genre that we're rarely present yeah. in at all, let alone in dynamic ways. But I think I really am drawn to the sci-fi genre because in it, we're able, you know, we're able to write our, you know, write our own rules about society. And so we created this society that really is cruel and callous and and you can see the cynicism in it and because of that it 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 heightens the journey that Tala and her daughter Annalyn go on and you know you can kind of you feel their desperation um much more acutely exactly paint the picture for our viewers what mm -hmm. is the deal in this dystopian world okay um the deal <laughs> uh, well I, I want to start by saying you know we we conceived of this movie, I conceived of it way before the pandemic. So um, just, uh, it, we actually fil finished filming it December, 2019. Wow. Right before the world a few changed. months, so, yeah, a few months before. Yeah, so it was, um, it was pretty wild as, as the pandemic was unfolding. But essentially, the, this is a post-pandemic story. So it takes place in a world that... Uh, has the uh, the the planet has already been ravaged by uh, a virus worse than we have ever seen it's it's killed humans animals and crops and climate change disasters have happened so the remaining survivors are left with very little resources to share and the government that rises we call it the bureau of life they come up with the deal yeah. and what the deal is is essentially 20 years for a life so in order to get food rations, a government job, basic housing, basic health care, you can take the deal and the government will give you all those things. But in exchange, you have to agree to give up your life in 20 years. Yeah. So it's 20 years for a life. And in the movie, we meet Tala, uh, our mom, and Annalyn, her daughter. Tala took the deal when she was 20. And now she's about to turn 40. She's five days away from... Um, her processing date and uh she spent her life trying to set her daughter up so her daughter didn't have to take the deal and uh her daughter gets an unexpected medical diagnosis and that kind of sets our our duo off on their the adventure yes. yeah to to escape to escape this world i love it i love your character by the way tala bayani which yeah. in the philippines meets means hero um star hero <laughs> you know, so, you that was my mama. That's my mama to me. <laughs> <laughs> Are you and you? Your character is a hero of a mother here. Oh well, thank you. Um, I, I like I said, this is it's all to, it's all to honor women and people like my mom who, 
love their love their families so much that they will do anything for them at whatever cost you know so it's a uh, I appreciate that. And I think one of the universal things, which is nice about the the film is that it's, it's really a mutual love that she shares with her daughter. You know, they're both desperate to protect each other. And I, I, I find that, I find that kind of depth of love, something universal that anyone who's loved somebody that much or has been loved that much can relate to the story. And it's, it's a dynamic, dynamic that's seldom seen in the films, you know, mother. Right, daughter. right, right. Yeah, um, I I was uh I was doing an interview with Dean Devlin yesterday, and he was saying one of the reasons he really connected with our script was, uh, you know, he hadn't seen, you know, you you just don't see mother daughter in this sci fi dystopian genre, and uh, he was, you know, that was one of the reasons he signed on. Yeah. So, Miss Mali, you are part Filipino, right? I am. I feel like I'm a very proud Pinay. Uh, my mother is Filipina, but I, I lived in the Philippines uh, for a year after I graduated from college. I did a Fulbright scholarship there. And um, and then before I went into entertainment, I was actually uh, an investment banker and I was based in Hong Kong and my coverage area was the Philippines. Yeah. So I worked in the Philippines, worked, lived, studied, scuba dived, drank San Miguel, climbed mountains. I did so many things in the Philippines. I love my time. ate all there. the Filipino food. All the Filipino food. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ms. Mali, by the way, I was trying to figure out where was this shot? Where was the deal shot? The deal was actually shot in Belgrade, in and around Belgrade, Serbia. Um, at the time, uh, Dean was filming a TV series there. And he, he said this in his interview yesterday when he first got the script, he was like, you know, in order to do this script justice, this is like a $25 million movie. And um, and we didn't have $25 million, but he he thought, let me send this script over to my line producer in Serbia. And they saw it and they came back with a budget that we could do. And um, when he sent the location pictures, that was it. It was a done deal because that brutalist dystopian architecture was so perfect I feel like for the story that we were trying to tell and then they had you know these amazing underground tunnels and this huge the you know caves that we used and uh uh just natural landscape as well uh there's a lake scene um later on in the movie and even this backdrop this is a real this isn't a built set this is a real building in in Belgrade Wow, yeah, I was starting to figure, I'm like, where did they shot this? Did they shoot this somewhere here in America? How did they close the tracks? All that, I'm like, wow, you know. In Eastern Europe and Serbia, yeah, our crew our crew was amazing. It was it was really such a wonderful experience. And the food, uh, people ask me like what the food was like. And I always say, it's like, it really reminded me of Filipino food. I was, I mean, but ex- instead of rice, it was more potatoes, but it was very like, you know, meat and, 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 rice well in my in my mind I, I substitute the rice and the potatoes but and lots of delicious sauces and uh really rich tasty food minus the fish sauce of course of course yeah no, <laughs> minus the patis. no patis no patis there, <laughs> but you know I was able I was able to I was able to hold out until I got up got back home <laughs> oh no Mr. Mali you work behind the scenes and of course in front of the camera as well so what is next for Mr. Mali can you give us a little hint of what we can expect Oh my goodness. Um, yes, on the produ- uh, well, let's see, on the acting side, I'll start with that. Um, I uh, finished filming a recurring role on uh, Snowpiercer season oh, four opposite yeah. David Diggs. Uh, Snowpiercer is the dystopian um, TV series based on his on Bong Joon-ho's movie. And let's see, I've got, I think I've got a guest star coming up on CSI Vegas. I'll be on uh, the new reboot of Quantum Leap. Um, And then on the voiceover acting side, I've got a bunch of animated shows and video games uh, out there and coming out. I've got shows on Netflix and Disney and uh, Nickelodeon. And then on the producing side, I'm super, super excited about uh, my partner, Grace Lay and I, we have Linlay Productions and um, we had three films premiere at Sundance this past year. And one of them, uh, Nanny, was the first horror film. Oh my God, you produced produce Nanny? Yeah, we're, we're, we're executive producers of Nanny. It's the first horror film to win the US Grand Jury Prize. And yeah. it's being distributed by Amazon Blumhouse. Yeah, did you see it? I love, I saw it and I interviewed of, of, uh, oh my- Anna Dior and the director. Yeah, Anna and Nikiatu. 
on the Japan, Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yes. yes. Oh my, my gosh. I just came. We just did the LA screening uh, last week. Uh, Grace and wow. I were there on the red carpet and it was just, oh my gosh, I'm so proud of that movie. And then we've got, uh, We've got a couple documentaries also that premiered at Sundance. One is called Riotsville, USA. That's being distributed by, by, by Magnolia. And uh, we supported a movie called Aftershock, which um, Disney and uh, ABC uh, uh, are distributing. Uh, it's out on Hulu now. But we've got a whole bunch of movies uh, in the pipeline that are either in post-production or uh, in various stages of development. So you are a one busy lady. I am, but I'm so glad that we could make this work. We, you and I struggled to find a time for a little bit. <laughs> you too. I am so sorry because right after this, I'm doing the crowd, oh. five million stuff. So oh I'm my like, gosh, no, it's I want to talk season. to Mr. Molly. Please, please, please. I get it. I get it. And I'm. it means so much to me. Um, I am, I, I'm so proud of my Filipino heritage and uh, it it means the world to me. Like when, when my mom's friends saw the movie, you know, and them calling me and I'm like, oh, Tita, you were able to find it. And they're just, they're just in tears, like, you know, letting me know how much they could see and feel my mom in it and how they, they felt so proud. And I, it just makes it all worthwhile. Oh, I love it. I'm so happy that you are one of the producers of Nanny because I love that movie. Yes. Oh. And I love talking to both of them. By the way, both oh. of them said, we love you, Manny. I'm like, oh. Oh, my God. <laughs> of course. Of course. You're so much fun to talk with and Very so knowledgeable. Um, you know, and I would say it's it, it, you see that you see, you've seen both films, but both of them are really centering women of color mothers. Yes. And you see you see what they go through in different ways and in two different genres. But I feel like that's something that uh, Grace and I at Lindley Productions, we really we really want to focus on. It's, you know, yeah. multi- intergenerational stories that center multicultural talent. Exactly. If the nanny, I told him if the na- if nanny is uh, is a uh, immigration story masquerading as a horror film exactly and and in a way in a way that's exactly ours too it's you know it's a woman of color mother you know love story with you know that's masquerading as a sci-fi film (laughs) and it's also about immigration i mean if you have to follow all these rules in order for you to survive you know absolutely (laughs) yeah absolutely and i'm so i'm so glad you mentioned that because uh i think that's the power of genre and you know when you start off with something that's such an intimate heartfelt story like Nikki Atu's, um, like the one that I share with my mom uh, and, and set it in the genre. I, I I just, I find that kind of, um, that kind of storytelling really compelling and getting, yes. you know, getting to center, getting to center our perspectives. Oh, now, Mr. Mali, the deal is now out on the Roku channel for free, yes. by the way. Which yeah, might- you don't need, you don't even need a Roku device to, oh, you don't. to watch it. Yeah, a lot of people, um, many people have TVs that already come with Roku. So for those people, like it's on there, you can just, you know, you can find us and, and stream us anytime. But for people who may not have a Roku device, uh, there are links out there. I mean, you can, you just download the app and you can watch it on your device, on your iPad or whatever. And it's been it's been wonderful it, to me. It's uh, my mom always used to say, "What's mine is yours," and to me, that's the whole the whole thing about this is sharing the love that um, she showed me. And here we are, we sharing this movie. You can you know everyone can see it easily. Yeah. So now that you know, what do you hope for our viewers, both Phil Ams and Nan, to get after watching the film? Um. To get well, I I mean it's a it's it really is a universal story. I think that everyone can relate to. You know, um, I I hope people come away with that sense of love and um, and and greater I think and greater empathy for what it's like to uh, what it's like to to be in a desperate situ- situation to want to take care of your loved ones to want to do what everything you can to protect them. Um, that that I think is a that I think is an emotional ride and journey that we make that is um, fun and thrilling and uh, you know adventurous all at the same time. Oh, now since Miss Somali, since you're Filipino, Phil am Filipino American, Christmas is big in the Philippines. So, what does the holidays mean to you? Oh, it's it's really what my mom taught me. It's about family, you know, spending time, spending quieter time with family and really um, appreciating 
all the gifts that we've been given and yeah i i you know my mom passed away nine years ago so i miss her every year we spend we spend the holidays though um at her home and we put out the barol and we have you know like it's and you know decorate the tree with all of her ornaments and so for me it really is a time that i get to uh reconnect with her as well she's you know i feel like she's been guiding me through yes through this whole process of movie making and uh getting into producing but hollywood you know hollywood can be can be uh all consuming sometimes so i'm looking forward to the holidays oh you know my mommy just passed away last year as well so oh, I'm so i feel sorry. all your i feel all the moms i feel all, all that whole feeling and i yeah. also miss my mommy so yeah i just buried her tuesday her ashes with her with the man she loved my stepdad so i'm like wow i know yeah, yeah my, you know. I, I have a, a stepdad figure in my life too and it was uh yeah we 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 cremated my mom too and uh yeah, I hope you were able to um to celebrate all the wonderful things that she that she did in her life. I will. I mean, I'm I'm the only child. I'm her only oh, good in. baby. Yeah. Me I too. Go. Oh wow. Yeah. yeah, I don't even know if I said that right. Oh my god, I apologize. Yeah, for that. Yeah, to Gala. Okay. okay. Um, I, I'm like, I think I said that right. Uh that was my first reaction. I'm an only child too, which is rare. Yeah, yeah. Oh wow! That means that our moms didn't care about anything else but just to provide something for us. So that's why I value my mommy so 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 much. Yeah, I, I mean, all the the conversations and the moments that you see between Tala and Annalyn in the movie, those are all out of real life. You know, my mom would, you know, she would sit me down and she would tell me like, "Okay, <clears throat> this is what you need to do." Yeah. after I die that you know this is this is what you know this is where I want you to find these valuables that I've scored you know yes. in a way here and this is where you need to go for this and uh every everything about our relationship um were you kind of sort of like hard like Annalie like mom I know we're ready what to do la 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 <laughs> oh absolutely and then there's a scene in the you know toward the beginning of the film where you know Annalyn is a teenage daughter and she's having to face the fact that her mother took the deal and has to die in a few days and in the movie you know she they have an argument and she yells at her mom and she storms yeah. out and uh I don't think I'm spoiling anything because that's right no, up at the beginning. that's in the beginning um, <laughs> but uh that was taken right out of my real life because when I was a teenager in high school my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer and on the day that she was supposed to go into the hospital to get her mastectomy I just didn't have the emotional, um, I didn't have the emotional maturity to know how to deal with it. She's, you know, a single mom. She was my everything. And I did exactly what you see on screen. I, I got mad at her. I refused to go to the hospital and I ran out and I went to be with my friends. I mean, it was like so horrible when I think about it back then. But, you know, you understand when you're young and you feel that kind of love and you don't, you don't know, you don't know sometimes how to how to process it. So those the, seeing those moments and then, you know, seeing those moments on screen uh, between Tala and Annalyn and, and knowing where they come from in my real life is uh, kind of is a pretty transcendent feeling. But I feel I feel so fortunate to have been able to make this movie. I love it. And I cannot not not wait for everyone to see the deal on the Roku channel. A big congrats on the deal again, Miss Somali. And a Thank smart you. it's a smart sci-fi drama. And it's such a great deal from everything that we've talked about. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you so much, Manny. Oh, maraming salamat. Maraming and maligayang Pasko. Oh, maligayang Pasko. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Woo! -hoo!